Samuel, he anoints David right in front of all of his jealous brothers, right? Which also speaks of Jesus, kind of like Joseph's story as well. And he anoints him with the oil and then he departs, right? And that's what we see in in that story. But David was known to the prophet, right? The prophet Samuel, but not the king. Just like Jesus, Christ was known to the prophets, but not the kings. Like Herod himself didn't know him. Herod wanted to murder him as a baby because he was satanic, right? He was, you know, Satan's a liar and a murderer from the beginning, just as Jesus said. So that's what we see there. So there's more. There's more. This is so fun. Don't you think it's fun to do this? So they were both good shepherds, right? David was a good shepherd. He would protect the flock. They were both from where? Bethlehem, right? Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Here's that Micah scripture, right? The famous scripture about Christmas, about the birth of Jesus. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, you are too little to be among the clans of Judah. From you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel. That's exactly what happened. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. He was raised in Nazareth. Remember, he was to be called a Nazarene. That's more Old Testament scripture. Also, he was from the land of Nephtali. I think it's Zebulun and Nephtali, which intersects into where Nazareth was in those days. So it's an amazing fulfillment of prophecy. All of that is, guys, all of it. So Who's coming forth, the scripture continues, is from old, from of old, from ancient days or the ancient of days. And that's another name for the Messiah, for Jesus Christ, the ancient of days. And you see that in Daniel. And we're about to look at that, you guys. So this right here, this is an amazing thing that we're looking at these scriptures. So let's keep looking at them. So therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth. The rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord. And here it is in 1 Samuel chapter 16. And whenever the harmful spirit, this is when Saul was being uh, harassed by this, this evil dark spirit. And whenever the harmful spirit from God, God allowed the spirit to go to him, was upon Saul. David took the lyre and he played it with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well. And the harmful spirit departed from him. Did not Jesus go around rebuking evil spirits and setting people free from the the bondage of these evil spirits. That's exactly what Jesus did. And we see a picture of that with David when he went to Saul to soothe and to, to, to make Saul well. So here's a picture. Check this out. Here's a picture. This is from Saqqara, Egypt. Many scholars believe that these are the Hebrews that came back with new clothing to Joseph. And it's a wall, very preserved wall painting in Saqqara, Egypt. But what's cool about it is it shows which what we call right the the lyre or the harp as some scriptures might call it but it was like a guitar basically like a right here was the guitar part right here's the strings and here's a real picture of what it probably looked like this is probably what david was playing for saul i just thought it would be really cool to show that picture right so here we are the end this is the last part of this presentation because i want to end it with this you know i know we've all heard the story of david defeating goliath which really happened in a real place in israel in a real time this is a real event. And this guy was over nine feet tall. And the people were shorter back then. Here's David, and he defeats him with a stone that was uncut, not cut with human hands. So that takes us to Daniel, speaking about the end of days. As you looked, he says to Daniel, a stone was cut out by no human hand, and it struck the image. Remember, David took the stone from the river, the brook, and it struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them into pieces. This image of this world power, the world system, it was Babylon, it was Persia, the Medo-Persian Empire, the Grecian Empire, the Roman Empire. It speaks of the world moving forward in time. So Daniel 2 continues, Then the iron, the clay, and the bronze, the silver, and the gold all together were broken in pieces and became like shaft 
of the summer threshing floors. That's the little, the, the kernel, right? That they would separate. They would throw the wheat up with a rake, basically, and it would separate the shell from the actual grain. And the shaft would just blow away in the wind and become dust. And that's what we see this fulfillment in Daniel is, and it was a rock uncut without human hands flung through space, and it crushes this image, this big image of the gold being the the, the Empire of Babylon, the Medo-Persian Empire, the two arms of silver, the chest and the belly of, of the bronze was speaking of the Grecian Empire and the two legs because the Roman Empire was divided into the Eastern and Western Roman Empire. So the two legs would speak of the iron of the Roman Empire. And the last one is a mixture of the Roman Empire and the clay and they don't mix together. It's interesting, right? So that's that last one is like that final, final empire of the world. And this stone comes and d- just destroys the whole thing and starts all. But watch this. This is where the part that's really beautiful. The very last part of this Daniel scripture speaks of Jesus, the second coming and how he's going to make everything new and amazing and awesome. So here it is. Watch this. And the wind carried them away so that not a trace of them could be found. But the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. So the stone that came in, that stone is Jesus himself, my friend. Jesus is the stone of Israel. The stone, the the stone that the builders rejected became the chief cornerstone. Jesus called himself that. Isn't that amazing, you guys? He is our new kingdom. He's our new temple. He's he's gonna fill that new temple. It's gonna be a physical, it's not just spiritual. This is gonna be an actual physical place in Jerusalem someday. And it's an amazing thing that we get to see that maybe in our time or if we get You know, we die and we're in heaven someday. We will see that. And it's just awesome, you guys. All right. So God bless you. Hey, if you haven't checked it out, check out my new book. You can pre-order it right now on Amazon. See Jesus in the Old Testament. It's going to go through every part of the Tanakh, if you're in Israel, or the Old Testament in the order of the Jewish Bible, just like Jesus put in that order. And you can order this, pre-order it right now on Amazon.com. I'm writing it right now. And I think you'll be blessed by that, my friends. So (laughs) pretty amazing stuff that God's allowing us to do this even today. So hit this playlist right here for free. You can watch this playlist and see all the episodes that we've done so far on how to find Jesus in the Old Testament. Click on this playlist right here.